Okay, so in the same vein as the last presentation, uh, hi, by the way, I'm, I'm still Andy Davidson, I still work for Hurricane Electric, a lot of hand out leads. Uh, Wallop has a root server and so does Trex, and I thought I'd talk about root servers for no more than five minutes. So, um, again, um, in, in the same vein as the last presentation, hands up who uses the Trex root server? There's a couple of people. Hands up if you're connected to Trex and don't use it. Uh, and is that deliberate or is that deliberate? Deliberate? More or less de deliberate. <coughs> okay. Well, maybe um, other people in the room who don't know whether they use the root server yet. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you very quickly about root servers and also how you might consider them safe uh, if you know about all the features of them. Okay. A root server is a mechanism to give you, um, in one BGP session, access to many, many, many peers. So a single peering session might reach all of these people if they uh, represented different networks. Um, at the Trex, um, the, um, uh, the root servers are configured in a, in a reliable way. And of course, unlike in some exchanges in other parts of the world, the root servers are optional. Um, there are places in the world where root server peering is mandatory on the exchange. Um, Actually, we'll be thinking uh, about multicast service. Uh, right now, we don't have anyone peering a multicast, but we've been thinking that if ever that does come about, uh, the public multicast peering like, it doesn't make sense to make direct sessions since all the traffic will still uh, be going everywhere anyway. So we will probably <laughs> have uh, a multicast uh, <coughs> VLAN user mandatory thing. Uh, I'm sure you think that's right. Okay. Um, root servers are great for internet exchange points because um, the, the, the reason why they keep, or why exchange points keep talking to people and saying, please connect to the root server, please, is because um, they are great uh, when you sell an exchange port because someone can get value that day from, from having lots of peerings. Um, a new member can plug into the exchange and instantly get traffic, which is really, really good. <coughs> it's great for bringing people to the exchange. Um, the way they work on a normal at the peering lab, you configure uh, BGP sessions between routers and uh, the traffic flows in the same direction, that's good. But with a root server in the middle, um, you configure just one BGP session to the root server um, and you get um, the prefixes of all of the other connected networks, but the traffic still flows router to router, router to router, however you say it. It doesn't actually go um, through the root server. It, the traffic is still member to member. Um, advanced root servers um, allow for um, filtering between the members. So if you um, don't connect to the root server because you don't want to leak your prefixes to your transit customers, you're able to configure filters between um, members so that traffic doesn't flow between members despite the fact that all members might have a session to the root server. Um, the way uh, they work, you know, for outbound fill for prefixes, my prefix is going to USAID um, I can choose to send my prefix to only a selected peer on Trex by setting a community 65534 colon, then their AS number. And if I do that, only the, my prefix will only be sent to that particular um, other member. Uh, but I can hide my prefix from another member as well by tagging the community not colon their AS number. So if you're concerned, if your main concern about root servers is uh, because it means that you're giving uh, possibly free access to your network to your transit customers, and um, that's one way that you can uh, work around the problem. You can, you can hide your prefixes from other networks. On the inbound prefix filtering, in order to reject um, the prefixes of another member, right now you have to build um, an AS path um, filter. So you can say, I'd like to receive all the prefixes, but not the prefixes from this guy, AS123. You have to build, a, um, a, say, a root map or something that matched your root server config uh, and denied those prefixes from being learned over the root server session. Um, if you want to accept the prefixes, you do nothing. That's the easiest method. Um, I think you do IRR filtering, don't you, on the root server? Yeah. So um, it's a, a good way of peering with somebody that you might not uh, trust not to leak at you because you can configure or leave the root servers already filter from the data that's in the right database. So if, uh, if someone tries to leak a prefix to you that isn't inside their AS set or the AS set that registered with the exchange point, that prefix will be dropped on the root server and you won't get that, peer, you won't get that prefix over the session. That means that uh, if you think, well, I kind of want to peer with this guy because he's got some uh, users that I want to peer with, but I really don't trust him because I think he's going to leak um, other prefixes to me, you can peer with them over the root server 
And um, can you just you, you, you have MLP there? Or can you just open that? Yes, MLP is another way. is is the technique that root servers offer. It's called multilateral peering, and it, a multilateral peering is simply where you get all, uh, peering with many um, routers on one single session. Um, I've put some examples in the slides that you can download, but um, crucially, if you do decide to start peering at the root server, um, if you use, uh, you have to put. Uh, no BGP enforced first AS under the uh, router config because the root server is transparent. It hides its own AS number so that you can still do traffic engineering by the AS. The, 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 the adjacent AS number is the other member. So you can still do your um, traffic engineering and prefix filtering with the member's AS. Uh, and that's the widget that you need on Cisco to, uh, to do it. Um, if you do a separate peer group for each um, member, uh, sorry, each root server, so that you've got root server peerings and bilateral peering to a separate peer group, um, remember to shut down both peer groups if you have to, if you need to uh, do a maintenance on the exchange pool. But you could use um, peer templates and you can inherit the um, root server config inside, or you can inherit the normal peering config into your um, root server template so that you only need to change config in one place if you need to um, shut down all of your exchange peering temporarily. Uh, and both of those examples are in the slides, you can grab them later. And I've also put a Juniper example of how to configure a root server session, although, well, they kind of look like a peering session, um, and I guess that's new to a few of you. Uh, in terms of um, IRR filtering, what you tend to do is uh, say that you Im import, oh, at, at the minute it's um, at Trex, there isn't an AS set for root server peering, but if that's a problem, if that's the one thing that's stopping you from uh, setting up roots over peering because you need to express it in IRR. I'm sure that could be okay. some nodding, probably some discussions to happen later if, if your concerns are based with filtering. Um, so, the guys who don't peer with the root service, is there, have I said anything that might change your mind? I'll give you a free jumper if so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I'm concerned that what happens if someone pops up with the route server? That might be a bad situation. Yeah, you so, you so, I mean, we have to trust the party who maintains the route server entirely. As much as you have to trust the switch that carries your traffic. Yeah, that's true. Do you use the, you use the automated script that uh, Lonap wrote? So, with them, the reason why um, at Lonap I wrote an automated script to provision root server config is because I trust the computer not to make a mistake so much, but I don't trust me not to make a mistake. So I, um, I built a, a config script uh, builder that's actually quite hard to break. Um, so it reduces the impact of human error. Whereas I bet when you do a bilateral peering session, um, the, um, the member at the other side of the session might also make a mistake. And But most of the risks at the exchange points, people tend to cite are layer two risks rather than layer three. And you're still exposed to those if you connect to the internet exchange point. The root servers are reliable, uh, threats are reliable at that they're pretty reliable the world over now. Um, and if, if, you, uh, if you're tempted, if that's your main concern, I think you might be surprised at the reliability. And I'll give you a jumper if you say you're considering it. Well, there are two of them, right? Yeah. You only have to consider it to get the jumper. You don't yeah. have to. <laughs> the guarantee is going down. Well, it's still a win. If, uh, it's still a win if you, if, you go, if you have a beer and go home drunk and tempted to configure a session. <laughs> also, one, one, one point is that, uh, for example, we have two of these route servers so that we can upgrade them uh, to software upgrades without affecting customers. And also, uh, right now we are running the same software on both, but at some point we will uh, probably switch the other one to run different software so that if there are software bugs, they won't uh, be a problem. Yeah. Uh, there are scripts uh, that Andy wrote automatically create uh, scripts for two or three different demons. Yes, you can build a Quagga and OpenBGPD config, uh, configs. And Bird. And Bird, yeah, all three. Right and now we're using just Bird. Yes. And so, so basically, when you're pairing with two route servers, you should be uh, getting the same routes from both. So you'll have, you have two copies of everything. Yes. Plus, if you still, you can still maintain your direct pairing sessions. Yes. So basically, if you've already set something up, it doesn't make sense to start tearing them down just because you want to use a route server. Yes. So then you'll have a few extra copies, but they should pretty much be equal uh, in the eyes, and they'll have the next, same next. Yes. When I um, uh, tested 
Um, I did some work, <coughs> on, um, not last Christmas, the Christmas before, um, a number of exchange operators, um, myself, uh, Mo from Lynx, Elisa, who was at Amtix at the time, a few of us all got together and we actually stress tested all of the root server software and I can share our data from that with you as well that proves that Bird um, and OpenBGPD are, are very stable choices for, for root servers and will scale beyond the needs that um, the exchange points in Europe, and even the largest exchange points in Europe have today. But, so, I, I can share that later. It's an interesting conversation, but I'll consider the slide. Oh well, that's that's my job as root server salesman. I'm still in the, um, <laughs> I'm still, uh, I'll be available this evening to talk further as well, uh, especially if you want to talk more about appearing in London or anything along those lines. I'm, I'm around, so please do, uh, please do talk to me, and I'll give you a jumper later. Thank <laughs> you.